I occasionally find myself conversing with strangers. For example, my randomly assigned seatmate on my recent flight here to France. But it could also be at a social gathering or a sporting event or any of the other places that all of us find ourselves, you know, on any given day. It could even be while waiting in the audience queue for a TED Talk. And in the course of those impromptu conversations, I'm sometimes asked, so, what do you do? And my response is, I'm a planetary scientist. Usually that elicits a surprised reaction like, wow, that's, that's cool. And you know what? It is cool. <laughs> it's one of the coolest jobs in the world. <laughs> and right after that, I'm usually peppered with questions like, is there water on Mars? Is there life on Mars? Have aliens visited Earth? And I'm thrilled to receive and answer these questions because I've devoted my life to planetary science, and anybody that wants to talk about it is okay by me. Just to get these out of the way, there is water on Mars, but it's almost completely frozen. We haven't found life on Mars yet, but we also have done a pretty poor job of looking for it. And you're not going to like this one. There are no aliens hiding out at, at Area 51 or anywhere else. Sometimes, though, I get a more somber negative reaction when I identify my occupation. I cannot support space exploration when there is so much suffering in the world. All of that money should be spent here on Earth and not in space. Now, setting aside the fact that all of the money that we spend on space exploration is spent on Earth, the chances are that there's at least a few of you in the audience tonight that can empathize with the general idea of that statement. There is a lot of suffering on this world, and we ought to do something about it. The very notion that we must somehow choose between either space exploration or expenditures to reduce world suffering is a false dilemma. We can do both. We are doing both, and we have been doing both for a long time. Time. But more importantly, the false dilemma doesn't even allow the possibility that rather than acting in opposition to the reduction in suffering, space exploration could actually be part of the solution. So it's worth asking the question, has space exploration been a good investment up to now? Are we better off today than we otherwise would have been thanks to our investments in space? We take for granted that we can predict and monitor the weather at any location on the Earth and provide data and information to anywhere almost instantaneously. But that didn't used to be the case. Prior to the space era, millions of people lost their lives, countless millions more suffered as the result of unpredicted, unseen, and unwarned environmental disasters. As just one example, the Great Flood of 1931 in China killed upwards of four million people and a half a million more perished seven years later in China under almost identical conditions. In contrast, since the advent of, the, of the satellites, countless lives have been saved thanks to our eyes in space providing predictive data that warns in advance of these environmental catastrophes. A good deal of the satellite technology that's currently in orbit around Earth right now was not originally developed for Earth. It was developed for the much more challenging and demanding space exploration missions that we have flung out across the solar system to study our neighbors like Mars and Venus, the planet Jupiter, Saturn and its moon, my favorite, Titan, and most recently Pluto and the Kuiper Belt objects that lie even farther beyond. Today's life-saving satellite technology has been partially enabled by space exploration. And tomorrow's life-saving satellite technology will be enabled by today's space exploration. So has space exploration been a, a good deal? It's pretty hard to argue otherwise. And it's clear that rather than acting in opposition to the reduction of suffering, space exploration supports that noble and moral cause. 
we are all living longer and better lives. And that is true globally. We've achieved this by using the resources of Earth, energy on Earth, to produce goods and products that are necessary for us to live in a human-created, safe environment. The problem is the laws of thermodynamics dictate that we must also produce waste. Everything we do, absolutely everything, produces waste. It's inescapable. Carbon dioxide is one of those waste products. And it's no coincidence that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased in concert with the incredible increase in life expectancy and dramatic decrease in suffering. But the current climate crisis that we're monitoring, thanks to our eyes in space, is unleashing even greater amounts of suffering to greater, numbers, greater number of people across the world. After decades of hard-fought progress to improve the lives of humans on Earth, we're starting to go in the wrong direction. The optimists will say that, don't worry, technology has and always will save us from ourselves. That cleaner energy like solar, wind, geothermal, hydro, nuclear is the answer. But none of those come without a cost. There is no free lunch. Thermodynamics. Cleaner energy is really important, but it does not solve the problem of the growing demand for the extraction and refinement of resources. It does not solve the problem of the damage done by doing so. It does not solve the problem of the waste that is necessarily produced. And it does not solve the problem of the suffering and misery that results from the seemingly endless wars that are fought over control of Earth's limited resources. To put it politely, for right now, we have no choice but to excrete where we eat. We use Earth's raw materials, we use the energy on Earth, and we produce waste and dump it on Earth. But it doesn't have to be that way. There are vast, almost unimaginable resources beyond Earth. We do not need to mine the Earth, destroy our ecosystems, dump our waste, when we have a solar system filled with asteroids and moons and planets. All the resources we need are located in space. Iron, gold, platinum, cobalt, nickel, aluminum, magnesium, water, nitrogen, just to name a few. Technology can and will save us, but only if we use it to extract the resources in space, use the energy in space, and dump all the resulting waste that we create there and leave it in space. This is how we will ultimately reduce suffering in the long term. And space exploration is the conduit through which that will become a reality. This is why space exploration is necessary. Now, you might think that the, using resources in space is science fiction, but consider that just a little over 100 years ago, humans had just taken flight. At that time, the thought of going into space was science fiction. In fact, it was crazy talk. But 50 years later, we had satellites in space orbiting Earth. And a mere 20 years later, humans were walking on the moon. Do not underestimate the rapid pace of technological advancement. NASA's next Mars mission is a rover that will launch next year, and it carries an experiment that will take carbon dioxide from the thin atmosphere of Mars and turn it into oxygen. Once that happens, the science fiction of using raw materials in space will come to an end, and the reality of using raw materials in space will begin. And once again, as is often the case, space exploration is going to lead the way. Now, you might also think that the creation and production of actual products in space is pure fantasy, but it's not. I had the opportunity a few months ago to visit a, uh, a producer of rockets that puts small payloads into Earth's orbit. And in their manufacturing facility, they had state-of-the-art 3D printing machines. These were completely autonomous, 
completely robotic. No, no humans. And they weren't just being used to print little itty bitsy pieces of random stuff. They were being used to print the main part of a complex rocket engine. Okay. This was mind blowing to see this in real time and see this happening. It was pretty incredible. But what really blew me away later on as I thought about it more is that there's no reason in principle why that can't be done on the moon or Mars today. It is not a fantasy. If you're going to argue that space exploration is an unnecessary luxury that takes resources away from the more pressing needs of Earth, I implore you to think more deeply about the issue. Recognize the historical benefit that space exploration and space exploration technology has brought to humanity. Contemplate a reality in which ever increasing amounts of energy, even if it's cleaner energy, is being used to extract ever increasing amounts of resources and refining those resources, and if we stay on Earth, dumping those resources and waste in, in, on Earth. There is no greater pressing need in the long term than to take our damaging activities off of our home planet, the only place where we can live, and push it out into space. This is why space exploration is absolutely necessary. And we limit ourselves. We, if we limit our investment in space, we put ourselves and especially our future generations in peril. Will we leave behind a legacy of suffering that didn't have to happen? A legacy of what we should have done, what we could have done, but we just didn't do it? Or will we push forward into the era in which humans make the permanent exploration and permanent utilization of space a reality? Which of these paths is going to be our legacy? <laughs>